In this lecture, we're going to talk about factoring special patterns. And these special patterns come about from when we learned how to multiply binomials together. So as a reminder, if I have a binomial squared, that's the first term squared, plus 2 times the product, plus the last term squared. First term squared, 2 times the product, plus the last term squared. We had our difference of squares pattern. which is the first term squared minus the last term squared. So those are our quadratic patterns. So we're going to cover how to factor, if it's in the right-hand side, to turn it back into the left-hand side so that I could use that information to solve a quadratic equation. So notice that in both, well, actually all three of these, the first term has something squared. The last term has something squared. So what I want you to realize is that if the first and last terms are perfect squares, you want to try to look for um, a special pattern. Okay. Now, you may have to factor out a greatest common factor first to get the perfect squares, but you want to see if you factor out a greatest common factor, then you end up with perfect squares. Try to put it into one of the patterns. So going from here back to here, my rule is you're going to take the square root of the first. You're going to take the square root of the last. You're going to copy the sign. all squared. That's the general pattern. So square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. If it's in this form, a squared minus b squared, it's going to be the square root of the first minus square root of the last. Times actually square root of the first plus the square root of the last times the square root of the first minus the square root of the last. Notice I cannot, cannot at all factor a sum of two squares. I cannot factor that. Okay? So what we are going to do is do some examples using these patterns. And the first example is 9x squared minus 1. So I want to factor this. Well, 9 is a perfect square, so is x squared minus a perfect square. So I take the square root of the first plus square root of the last times square root of the first minus square root of the last. So I have 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. And all we're going to do right now is factor. But once you have the factors, you can find your x-intercepts by solving these from our previous examples on solving those. Another example. y equals 20, no, y equals 75x cubed minus 20x. You may say, hey, there's no perfect square here. There's no perfect square here. Hey, that's a cube. But I do have a common factor in both of these. 5 goes into both 20 and 75. x, the lowest power of x that appears in both terms is x to the first. I can now do division. And, of course, I messed this up. Um, that would give me... 5 goes into there once, 15 times minus 15x squared minus 4. 
Okay, so again, I can't factor this any further necessarily. It doesn't look like I can factor it further, but I have something squared minus something squared. Okay, I want you to realize that, hey, that 15 is actually the perfect square of the square root of 15. So I have 5x, square root of the first, square root of 15x, plus 2, times the square root of 15x, minus 2. So what I want you to realize here, anytime you have something x squared minus a number, it's always going to be factorable. This is the first example I've given you where your answers are not rational numbers. Okay? But I want you to realize that if it's in this form, something squared, so something times something squared, so blank x squared minus a blank, you can always, always, always use that pattern to solve it. And again, you may have to pull out a greatest common factor before you can get it into that form. Okay, but be able to do that. Um, next one, 49x squared minus 16. Okay. Well, perfect square, perfect square. So I have square root of the first plus square root of the last. So I have 7x plus 4, 7x minus 4. Next one, y equals x to the fourth minus 16. Well, you say that's the fourth power, but isn't this the same thing as x squared squared minus 16? I would say yes, because 2 times 2 is 4. Well, the square root of something squared is that something, so I can use this pattern. So the square root of the first would be x squared plus the square root of the last is 4. Square root of the first is x squared minus square root of the last, which is 4. Here I can't do anything with the first term because it's something squared plus a number, which I said is can't be factored. But on the right-hand side, I still have something that's up something squared minus a number, which can be factored. So copy the first factor that I can't do anything with, x squared plus 4. And this is square root of the first, which is x, plus square root of the last, which is 2, times square root of the first minus square root of the last, which is x minus 2. Okay? So just because it's got higher powers doesn't necessarily mean I cannot use these patterns. Okay, so I've shown you several ways that this difference of square pattern can work out. Okay, a lot of times it's going to be in that nice straightforward way, but you can end up having multiple times that you can use that difference of square patterns. I will tell you if you have something to the fourth minus a number, you're going to be able to get something squared minus a number as one of your factors, which means you're always going to be able to factor that. Here, just because the number in front of the x squared wasn't a perfect square, I was able to come up with an irrational answer. Okay, So don't stop just because it's not a perfect square. You can still do some work there. So we've pretty much knocked out that pattern. Now let's look at stuff that's in this pattern. So I'm going to write down three examples. So y equals 16x squared plus 8x plus 1. y equals 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. And y equals 25x squared minus 30x plus 9. 
So I would like you to recognize that on each of these, my first terms are in fact perfect squares. My last terms are in fact perfect squares. So I'm just going to follow the rule. Square to the first, square to the last, copy the sign, all squared, but then go back and check to make sure that the middle term is going to be the correct term. And I'm going to show you how to do that when I do these. Square root of the first, 4x. Square root of the last, 1. Copy the plus sign, all squared. Now, you should remember that a binomial squared is a trinomial. First term is the first term squared. Last term is the last term squared. Middle time is 2 times the product. And you need to go back and make sure it's 2 times the product. Because there are times that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square, but the middle term does not add up right to be a perfect square pattern. So 2 times 1 is 2 times 4x is 8x. It does check. Square root of the first, 3x. Square root of the last, 2. Copy the sign, minus, all squared. Check the middle term. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 3x is negative 12x. That one checks. Square root of the first, 5x. Square root of the last, 3. Copy the negative sign, all squared. Negative 15 times 2 is, in fact, negative 30. So my middle number did check. Please check those middle numbers. There will be times that the middle number does not match, and if the middle number does not match, then you're going to have to go back and use another method to factor if it's factorable, which would be like grouping if the number coefficient for the x squared term is not 1, or factoring by inspection if the coefficient in front of the x is 1. Okay, next. So we're done. If you're in um, Algebra 1 or Geometry, we're done with this. If you are in Algebra 2, College Algebra, or beyond, we have one more special pattern that we need to be able to factor. So if you're in Algebra 2 or College Algebra, or beyond, continue watching. Otherwise, you are done with this video. And the other pattern we have is... The sum of cubes or the difference of cubes. Okay? So if I have a perfect cube plus a perfect cube or a perfect cube minus a perfect cube, there is a special pattern for factoring that. Okay? I'm going to rewrite both of those as a single thing. I'm going to write a cubed plus or minus b cubed. Okay? And I'm going to write down the pattern kind of in words. So the difference of cubes, or the sum, or difference of cubes, is a binomial times a trinomial. So the sum or difference of cubes is going to be a binomial times a trinomial. So for the binomial part, the first term is so cube root of the first. The last term is the cube root of the last. So here, I'm going to get the cube root of the first. I'm going to get the cube root of the last. Well, the cube root of a cubed is a. The cube root of b cubed is b. The trinomial portion. is the binomial first term squared, and that's equal to the first term. The last term 
is the binomial last term squared. And the middle term is the first times the last. So I'm going to take this number and square it. I'm going to take this number and square it. So I take the A and square it. I take the B and square it. Then I take the A times the B. Okay, now I've got some blanks. Our sign pattern. Copy. Change. Always positive. So copy. So if it's a plus, it's going to be a plus. If it's a minus, it's going to be a minus. Change. If it was a plus, it becomes a minus. If it's a minus, it becomes a plus. And the last term is always positive. So you're going to end up with a binomial, which you can solve easy. You take the opposite of this number divided by the coefficient of that number. And this trinomial that you end up with is never factorable. So once you do this difference of cube pattern, you know you are done. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do several examples using words as I do these, and hopefully that will help you get this down. Now, my recommendation is like every time I do things the same way every time, um, I would, I use the same words. And I use those words, I speak them out loud in class, but I speak them in my head when I'm doing those problems. So cube root of the first, cube root of the last, that number squared, that number squared, that product, copy, change, always positive, A, B, A squared, A, B, B squared, copy, change, always positive. First example, Y equals 8 x cubed minus 125. So cube root of the first would be 2x. Cube root of the last is going to be 5. This is one of the reasons why I had you memorize some perfect cubes. First number squared would be 4x squared. Last number squared would be 25. Middle term is 5 times 2x, which is 10x. Copy the sign, change it, always positive. Now, if I were to ask you to solve this, I would get 5 halves. This part has no solution. Actually, that one, 2, 5 is 10. I just happen to give you one that looks like it's still factorable. Square root of the first would be 2x. Square root of the last would be 5. Copy the sign all squared. 2x minus 5. 2x. Square root of the first. Square root of the last. Copy the sign all squared. And 5 times 2 is 10 times 2 is 20. So that remember, I told you to check the middle term. It didn't check. So that's one of those that, hey, it looks like it's a perfect square, but it's not. Next example. Y equals, let's do 64x cubed plus 27. Cube root of the first, which would be 4, it's a memorized cubed, 4x. Cube root of the last is 3. 4x squared would be, 4x quantity squared would be 16x squared. 3 times 4x is 12x. 3 squared is 9. Copy the sign, change it, always positive. 
again, of course, this is going to be a perfect square, and that's going to be a perfect square, but the middle is not two times the product. The middle is only one times the product, because that's how we came up with the middle. Solutions to this one would be negative three-fourths. Solutions to that is nothing. No solutions. Okay? So this equation never crosses the x-axis. This one does at negative three-fourths. So that's it for special patterns. Um, again, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, you're responsible for this cubic one. And that is it for factoring in general. Um, what I do want you to realize is that you can combine all of these factoring methods to factor multiple other types of problems.